just a big Charleston contest. I am uh, Stefano. I am an Italian man. You've reached the house of unrecognized talent. Ah, in God, Delaware. Three on Jim Dye and Uno. Speak plain, Rutledge. You know I can't follow a word here, damn French. It's Latin, Colonel McGee. A tribute to the eternal peace and harmony of the Delaware delegate. Domo arigato, Mr. Scotto. And welcome back to Brooklyn's Dad Talks About Everything Podcast. Today in the podcast, we revisit the idea of forgiveness and we look at the woman caught in adultery briefly. We also talk about the Gulf of Tonkin, some other things I wanted to correct. And we talk about how the government keeps us in fear. They keep both sides in fear and they keep us at each other's throat. Meanwhile, they're living it up at the Robinson's party. They're having their fun, they have their money, they have their pensions, they have their power, they have their parties, they have their everything. So just hang on. You know, my girl just called me up and she woke me from my sleep. You should have heard the things she said. You know, she hurt my feelings deep. I'm going to buy me a dog because I need a friend now. I'm going to buy me a dog. My girl, my girl, no love me, no how. Yes, that, of course, are the words, the uh, voice and heart words to the monkey song, Gonna Buy Me a Dog. Well, today on the podcast, we are going to look at several issues. I've done this before. We just kind of rattle on, just ramble on about several different things. And uh, some of it has to do, like most of it has to do with going back and listening to previous messages. Like last time we talked about forgiveness, and I really meant to go to John chapter 8. I just wanted to point this out about the woman caught in adultery, as we know the story. So the Lord comes, he stooped down, he wrote on the ground with his finger, and they continued, uh, just accusing her. So he raised himself up. Now we're reading from in John chapter 8. And he said, very well-known, well-known quote of the Lord. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Let him cast the first stone. As we understand, I'm reading the New King James. And he stooped down and wrote on the ground again. A lot of speculation about what he's writing on the ground. One speculation is that he was writing the law because the role of the law is to convict people of sin, particularly Israel, is to show them their deficiency before the Lord, even though they claim all that the Lord says we will do, and they didn't. That's why they needed a priesthood. That's why we don't need a priesthood, because we have the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one mediator between God and man. We don't need a priesthood. Right? We don't have that covenant anyway. We've covered that. Go listen to the covenant message. So those who heard him, back to the scripture, they were convicted in their conscience, and they went out one by one, beginning at the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Now, most people like to concentrate, in my experience, maybe not yours, on the verse that were, uh, he who was without sin among you, let him throw the first stone. But I want to concentrate on this bit. The Lord raised himself up. He saw that no one, he saw no one but the woman. And he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. And then the Lord, right after he says that, he spoke to those who weren't there to stone her. And he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, again, just coming back to that statement of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all eternity, the great God and Savior, he says, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn you. Wow. 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 That's powerful. That is powerful. Now he goes on to say, go and sin no more. So this is when when we come to the Lord. Now this is again during the Lord's earthly ministry to Israel under the law, etc. But the principle we can get here is that when we come to the Lord now, particularly even when we've been reconciled to God, Paul says through the cross, that the Lord doesn't condemn us. And if we're going to go and sin no more, we have to learn how to do that. And the way we do that is to walk in the new nature. And we've talked about that in season one, walking in the new nature. 
we still have our old nature. We talk about that a lot. So once we understand the Lord's forgiveness, once we learn to forgive ourselves, because when he says, has no one condemned you? She says, no one, Lord. And he says, neither do I condemn you. That includes herself. The Lord doesn't condemn her. And no one condemns her now. Not even She doesn't even condemn herself at this point. And she's found the Lord. And says, go and sin no more. And the only way to do that is in the new nature. And we've talked about that before. So I wanted to make that clear when we're coming off of, of forgiveness and forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. Now, again, not that there's anything wrong with this woman, but you know she doesn't become the Lord's best friend. Now, I know in some movies and other things, they make this Mary Magdalene, but we don't know that. You know, that's, it's not fair to inflict upon scripture tradition. So we'll just leave it at that. Another thing I wanted to chat about was in my, when I was talking about war, I was trying to remember as I was speaking about the Vietnam War, it was the Gulf of Tonkin confrontation is what I was trying to recall. That that was the excuse to escalate that war was the Gulf, Gulf of Tonkin. You can go look that up. An American ship was supposedly fired upon, etc. And it was an excuse again. Yeah, but then it, it, after that, historically, you can go read about it. It's very murky as to actually what happened that day. But again, it's like the USS Maine and these other things we talked about. It was an excuse, even the Twin Towers, an excuse to go escalate a war, start a war, escalate a war. Again, I was talking about this yesterday. When it comes to the Twin Towers, the interesting thing there is, is Tower Number 7. The Tower Number 7, which was not one of the Twin Towers, but it's there, WTC 7, World Trade Center 7, Building 7. It just collapses straight down, straight down collapses. Now, the interesting thing about that is there is a clip of a BBC report where a woman is reporting that the World Trade Center building number seven has collapsed while it's behind her, not collapsed yet. Now, was she lying to us? No, I think she was given a report that she was supposed to give. I think she was just reporting, honestly, but it hadn't collapsed yet. And then suddenly, a few minutes later, it collapsed, right? And there's also a report from ABC News. Now, this is the BBC and ABC News. You can't call them some right-wing outlets. Reporting from the Pentagon. Now, this is all on that day. This is all as shortly after things happen. And he reports, they're asking him about them. The Pentagon's behind him. It's obviously been hit with something. And he says, there's no plane here. There's no fuselage. There's nothing. Now, that plane didn't disintegrate. Also, you have to think about flying that plane, you know, two yards off the ground, a giant 747 or whatever it was, into the Pentagon at that point. That would take some massive skill. And so there is some thought that it might have been a missile, right? So anyway, I'm going to leave that where it is. But we have to be careful with this. Anyway, the after effect of that is some, for, for some reason, we then went to war with Iraq. We went, we had all the congressmen, both parties, to get up there and sing. And then what's his name? Quoted scripture out of context, which was horrible. I wish I had it in front of me. I should, I should, should have planned better. <laughs> it's really a bad scripture. You should not have been reading at that time. It's really badly out of context. It was sort of demonic in a way that he read it. But anywho, you know, they all got up there and they, they sang God Bless America, whatever they did, America the Beautiful. I, I understand. I mean, I remember being caught up in the moment, in the patriotic moment. But suddenly they turned this thing to weapons of mass destruction. And again, let me pull back the lens. It's built on fear. It's built on fear. So when you think that Saddam Hussein, who had, we'd been at war with in, in 19, what, 1991, the, the invasion invasion of Kuwait, he was already a bad guy. And we already had one attempt on the, you know, the sheikh who attempted to bring a bomb into the World Trade Center in the 90s. So we'd already had that, the blind sheikh or whatever that, whoever he was. And we already had Saddam Hussein on the bad guys list. So now when it's that he, he's creating weapons of mass destruction, we're all in fear. We just saw the Twin Towers, the symbol of American dominance, destroyed before our eyes in the World Trade Center for no reason. And we saw over 3,000 people die and in New York City, and it was terrible. So we're all very, our emotions are very high. And again, this is what we've got to be careful of, is, is making decisions based on our emotions. So then we start this massive, long, 17-year war, or whatever it was, in Iraq. We found some stuff, some uranium or whatever they found, but they didn't find these grand plans of mass destruction. And then Af Afghanistan, which made a little more sense. Uh, Afghanistan was a hub of terror. But what happened there? How many American lives were lost? How many people did we kill? Innocent people did we kill? Um, just recently, when 
they went in and bombed who they thought was a, ended up being a father and his family, a family of seven or whatever that was, you know, children that we killed after we pulled out and left all that billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of equipment there, tanks and guns and the biggest gun supplier in the world is Joe Biden to Afghanistan. And it's just a colossal waste of American blood and treasure. For what? For 22 Saudis who supposedly took over these planes and crashed them? Now, again, the first plane flying over Manhattan crashes into a building. And A, that that even happened when we think back and they're going, how did that plane leave its course from the airport and head into Manhattan? Nobody noticed. And then not only that, the second one <laughs> after that. So I'm not going to get into all the conspiracy theories. You can go do that on your own. But I'm getting back to the idea of fear. This idea of ruling us by fear, right? And that's what they did with COVID. And we even have now, the, the, again, I should have this in front of me, the release, those recordings of somebody saying, well, people aren't scared of COVID anymore. We need something new. Because when we're scared, it's that's when people give up their rights. They got the Patriot Act passed, which has been used nefariously by the government for so many reasons because they called it the Patriot Act. I was calling it these things. The We Love Motherhood Act and the Hot Dogs and Apple Pie Act. It's Civil Rights Act, you know, these things. But you got to look at the details of these things, the spending, the massive deficit spending and those kinds of things. And all the where all that money's going and all these little grubby pockets and everywhere where it goes. <laughs> Get off on that. So the Patriot Act came. And now we're talking about this bill about TikTok. Now, I'm not a fan of TikTok. Uh, Because I think it it kind of teaches people to have a short span of attention, and it just brings attention to a lot of people who don't need to have attention, but that's the way it is. Uh, And I do think that the Chinese may be using it to harvest information from individual Americans, and maybe it shouldn't be on government computers and that sort of thing. I get that. But now they're using this fear to pass this huge bill, trying to pass this huge bill to give the government sweeping powers over all social media, which means that they're going to have... They're already invading our lives and our privacy. They're already judging us. They're already putting us into political camps and judging our lives and how they're going to treat us that way. They're going to do even more. And and they're going to use it. They're going to use it to censor. So you can't use TikTok anymore to get your message out. They're going to start then using some other excuse so you can't use Twitter, so you can't use Facebook, and they're going to control information. It's what they want to do. They desire to control information. They love to control information. Uh, It's how they control the message. It's how they maintain their power. And we talked about with the war is that, you know, they don't go to war. They send other people to war. You know, they don't end up on trial. I mean, the Nuremberg trials were, were unique. But a lot of those guys escaped, and they escaped because the United States helped them escape Nazis. NASA is leftover Nazi technology run by Nazis, right? They were all over Operation Paperclip. I think that was the name of it. They brought them here to the United States, scientists and other Nazis. And so you have these ideas creeping in, and Nazism is a lot deeper tentacles than people realize than just, we hate the Jews, and Hitler making loud speeches about war. There's an awful lot to the philosophy and theology and practice of Nazism, National Socialism. The idea of getting people to think a certain way. And they based a lot on fear. Fear of the Jews was one thing. But it was many other things that was based on fear. And so that's how they get people to give up their rights. Plus promises. Promises. You give up your rights, we promise we'll take care of you. Right now, they're going to be rich and they're going to be wealthy and they're going to get the best medical care in the world and they're going to have everything because they're promising you. What do you think has been going on in the inner cities for the last 70 years? They've been promising them everything and they're worse than they've ever, not worse than they ever, but I can, you know, but in many ways they're worse than they've ever been. The homelessness, the drug addiction, the crime, they've been promising for, and they, again, the people promising them, they don't live in public housing. No, 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 they live in a nice house. They live in an upper middle class to upper class home somewhere in your city. That's where they live. That's where their income is from taxes, right? They're living off it and they're living fine. Like Lois Lerner, she used the IRS to go after groups she didn't like. A woman should be in prison, but no, no, they protect her because they can't go after her. They end up going after themselves. So all they do is because it's bad PR, she retires, golden parachute, 200 and whatever thousand dollars a year pension. Living it up at the Robinson's party. Living it up at the Robinson's house. 
living it up at the learner's party, living it up at the learner's house. And they learned from that. I knew it. I learned, they learned from that that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you do. Use government to oppress people any way you can because it, it's never going to come back to you. Again, we see this. People flying private jets, burning energy, motorcades, burning carbon into the air. While the rest of us are down at the bottom of the pit going, please help us throw us a bone, man, throw us a bone. And passing draconian laws that don't do anything anyway because the United States naturally is cleaner than it was just 20 years ago. Certainly cleaner than it was in the 70s. And we have more people now. But China's building, I don't know, what, what do they say? A coal plant every two weeks, a new one in China? You can't stop them. India and China are polluting a lot more than we ever could. Even if Canada and the United States went down to zero carbon emissions with carbon offsets, the joke that is. And that's how they get away with living the lavish lifestyles they do. But I have carbon offsets. That's a lot of we. Anyway, the idea here is we, we, we need to get freed from this fear. We need to get beyond this fear. And so that's why I was thinking about the Gulf of Tonkin. I couldn't remember it the other day when I was talking about uh, how we got into a lot of these different wars. Now, you might say that the revolution was based on an, an idea that was well out in the open. That's why they wrote the declaration to put before mankind the case, <laughs> right? And also the, the Civil War, the idea of, of separating from the United States, individual states, and the idea of freeing the slaves. So there were greater things at work there. There were greater things at work there. Anyway, again, I'm not discuss the merits of either of those wars. I'm just saying, I'm not saying everything is should be suspect. There are occasionally good reasons to fight. But we have to be careful because, again, remember, the people who send other young men and young women off to die, they don't go themselves, and often their children do not go. George H.W. Bush did fight. He was actually shot down in the Pacific. But his son, you know, famously was in the Texas Air National Guard and and it was in Alabama. I actually went to that, to Montgomery, where he was stationed. I was just curious while I was in Montgomery. <laughs> so I don't know. Again, I don't know the particulars of all that. I don't know why he didn't go to Vietnam, etc. But again, these are the things that when people point these things out, we fight each other over it instead of saying, well, why? Why is it like that? Why Why is someone like John Kerry like to live the lavish life that he lives while he's telling me that I need to live a draconian life? Why? Why is that going on? Because of fear. And again, I'm, I'm going to finish with this, but I'm not going to go through them all. But we can go back to the 1970s when this, this whole movement started. And there is prediction after prediction after prediction after prediction after prediction after prediction, after prediction copy and paste, prediction, 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 prediction. By this year, Florida will be underwater. Manhattan will be underwater. The temperature will rise. There will be in massive droughts. There will be destruction again and again and again and again and again. ABC News ran in 2008, was it? They ran that segment. Said in seven years, in 2015, Manhattan would be underwater. Milk would be $10 a gallon, which with inflation would be like $15 a gallon now, you know, adjusted. And gas would be 11 and would be scarce and be $10, $11 a gallon. They ran this fear thing. Manhattan underwater. It's it, it hasn't changed. The water levels haven't changed at all. And they do this all the time. They just reset the table because they have to have us in fear. So we will give up our rights. We will give up our cars. We will give up our comforts. We will give up our money. They want power and they want our money. You know, COVID was the biggest wealth creator in the world. Not for us. The wealthy people in the world got phenomenally wealthful. It was the biggest transfer of wealth in the history of the world was the COVID shutdowns. And they threw us a little pittance. They threw us those little checks and Trump's guilty of this too, but they were all behind it. They threw us these little checks. All it did was they ran the printing presses and sent us money to keep us appeased. And they were suffering for it now because of inflation. Massive deficit that was run. We're still running massive deficits. It's their excuse for everything. Obama came into office complaining about Bush's deficits, which was really most, mostly his last two years and primarily because of the war. But the last two years, the Democrats were in control of Congress. But they beat him up over the deficits. And I think his worst deficit was 400, mm, might have been 400, 500 uh, billion dollars. Um, and I think earlier, he was his deficits were in the $2 billion. I mean, that's not the first thing Obama did was pass that massive thing. And, and the deficit his first year was $1.1 trillion after they ran on the deficit. 
Because all they did was scare you about the deficit, and then as soon as we forgot about it, they did what they did. And now there was a precedent set. $1.1 trillion is nothing. Now, and then it, it, it started to come down. Republicans took over Congress. It started to come down. But it was still massive and bigger than anything Bush ever did that they complained about and screamed and cried and tore their garments and poured ashes on their heads about the deficit. They do it all the time with every issue. Both sides do it. And then they fundraise off it. They promise you the world, and then they don't do it. They promise you the world, and then they don't do it. Now we have over $31 trillion national debt. It's a, it's a millstone around the necks of our children paying that. They're not going to pay it. They're sitting fine. Their pensions are set. They get free health care. You know, this is too in, in Congress. Both parties do this. They pass bills for the rest of us, except Congress. Oh, the last page, here's an exemption. Everybody in Congress is exempt. You have to get inoculated. You have to get the vaccine, except Congress and people who work for Congress. They do it all the time. They exempt themselves from these things. You must do this, except Congress, except us and our staff. Right? We need to wake up to this. Both sides. The government is violently too... All right. <laughs> I'm in my libertarian stretch here. Oh, and uh, one last thing. I wanted to correct myself in that it was weeks and months and whatever ago. I just shot off my mouth that Coke had that can that said, stop, uh, try to be less white. That, that wasn't happening, so I apologize to Coke. Now, Coke has its own issues beyond that. Obviously, Bud Light's got an issue going on right now, insulting women. But uh, anyhow, that, that didn't happen. That was somebody's uh, Photoshop. I should have checked that. Apologize. I usually do. I'm pretty good about checking. But anyway, I just want to get those things off my chest and just as kind of an interlude maybe before we jump back into Scripture again. I keep saying that, but we'll get there. We'll get back there. Anyway, have a good day. <laughs> Rock on.